say in case the fans are wondering about Dale Earnhardt, where he is as the leader is coming into the pits. Dale Earnhardt is running in the 19th position. He just took over 18 from Dale Jarrett. And here is Rusty Wallace, Jack Aroot. Here he comes. And team men stopped the car. And now the crew has gone to work. Barry Dotson on the jack. Jimmy Maker on the front tire. They've exchanged the left front and the left rear. They've completed their work. Dotson around very quickly with the jack. He's underneath the car. It's up and away. They pull the tires off. The new ones go on. Now it's just a question of tightening the lug nuts. They clean the front radiator. They drop Rusty Wallace and he's away. Great shot from the crew cam as Rusty Wallace completes a near perfect pit stop and rolls back out onto the racetrack in pretty good shape as the car is spun right ahead of him. Oh, man, what a Boy. close call for Rusty. That's the 41 car of Ted Thomas that has gone around. Yeah, that had to give uh, Rusty some anxious moments as he went out of there expecting a clear track, and all of a sudden the dust is up in front <laughs> of him in a car right there. All he could see was dust coming out of the pits and hoping there wasn't anything ahead that he was going to run into. And the worst part was that he had to pull out in the racing groove to pull around that car. If someone had been coming along at speed, he'd have no choice but to run over Rusty Wallace. So Thomas is stopped down there at the pit exit. He's taking the window net down, so the car obviously will not start. This will probably bring out the caution flag. Let's well, Morgan Shepard coming into the pits right now in the Valvoline Pontiac, and apparently the caution still is not coming out. Let's go to Dr. Jerry Punch. There will be a four-tire change for the Valvoline Pontiac of Morgan Shepard, gentlemen, likewise. They were a little bit concerned, just like the Rusty Wallace crew, that they could make it the rest of the way on fuel. Now, Morgan actually needed to run about two more laps for them to feel very comfortable, but he couldn't afford to lose any more ground on the racetrack. So he opted to come in this time in pit. The left side tires have already got on the car. Now, right side, right front, and right rear are on the car. The jack is under the car. They're just finishing fueling the car, and they will roll the dice, just like Rusty Wallace, and see if they can make it the rest of the way. He's down and away. Let's go up pit road where Jack Aroon is standing by for Richard Childress. Jack? Well, Jerry, remember at the last stop, Richard Childress and the team were stopped for a 15-second penalty. Richard Dale Earnhardt was brought in. He made a good, smart move, but then you had an animated conversation with NASCAR. You pleaded your case, and it seems that you won. Oh, I can't talk. I can't talk. <laughs> That's pretty obvious. He was listening to Dale Earnhardt. He watched Earnhardt come by. Now, let's see if we can try it one more time. They've got trouble over in the answers, so I had to tell it don't we? Uh, what was the question? Well, you had a pretty animated conversation. Boy, you keep your poise pretty well here. With NASCAR, about that 15-second penalty, it's almost like they wanted to keep you a little longer when things worked out all right. Yeah, they, they were holding us for running through the chicane. Jack. Well, there's an 88 cars off, and I know you've got to go to work. The 38 car, Johnson is off full course yellow, gentlemen. Yeah, he's up against the guardrail in the S's, and so indeed a full course caution does come out. There is Terry Lavani moving into the pits. He is the leader, or was leader, of the race, and Jack will throw it back to you to call. Terry stop. Well, Tim Brewer and the crew let Shorty Edwards with the pit board bring Terry Labonte to a stop. He hits the marks nicely. They put the gas can in. They go to left side tire, cleaning the windshield, taking a quick cold drink. In the meantime, one crewman is changing the right side lug nuts so that the tire changers can come around. They do. They get under the car. They bring the jack up. Mike Hill pulls the left tire off, the right tire off, and Rusty Wallace is on pit road as well. Rusty has completed his work, and he's off and away. Lavani with a congested pit work here as Ricky Rudd and the rest of the crews are on work here. Let's check in with Jerry Punch. Well, the defending champion of the Budweiser at the Glen gets his service. Ricky Rudd and the Quaker State Buick up pit road. They have already changed the left side tires, cleaning the windshield. They sling the right side tires back across the wall. Larry McReynolds is checking with the crew, watching for the safety car, watching the congestion on pit road. Rudd is down the way. Let's go back to Jack Aru. Jerry, believe it or not, the congestion has forced Dale Earnhardt to pit in Terry Labonte's pit. The team has gone to work. They were bunched up. He's moved approximately 18 feet beyond his own pit, and they are going to work, and it's a long run to exchange tires. They are completing their work as Kenny Schrader goes by Dale Earnhardt. He lights the tires up, and he's off and away. Wow, there is just unbelievable congestion down there in the pits when several come in. There goes Earnhardt back out on the racetrack as the 41 car of Thomas is still at the exit of the pit road. We noticed that Rusty Wallace, we saw him come in while uh, Terry Labonte was in the pits. He only took on fuel. They didn't want to gamble. You know, he came in, they thought that they had run far enough under the green to go the rest of the way, but why gamble when you got a, a caution flag opportunity to come in, take the fuel on, get back out, still got himself some good track position. 
Now, we're going to take a look at why we are under a full course caution. One reason, of course, because of the 41 car, but also because of Dick Johnson's problem. Looks like the right front tire went down on that car as he came out of the, one of the S turns there and hit the wall, and then it goes down on the inside of the track once again. Boy, he hit the wall hard. Now, here is Rusty coming out of the pits, and look what happens just ahead of him. Oof. And as Benny said, he had to go right out in the racing groove when he saw that car spinning. Let's watch him again as he comes out from a different angle, and that car already spinning. He couldn't see anything for the dust, but he made a good move and got on through. So we have two instances around the racetrack here. They're trying to get this car started, push started, and Dick Johnson are trying to clean his car up where it's sitting up against the guardrail. Well, well, we understand that the uh, the starter, something has gone wrong with it on the Ted Com Thomas car, so now they got it running, and he's going again. He just couldn't get it cranked. We are back at Watkins Glen, New York. The number 38 car of Dick Johnson is against the guardrail, and we're trying to determine whether or not Dick is out of the car. I don't believe he is. That may be him just crawling out of the car at the moment. Here's what happened as he moved up through the S's. It looked like the right front tire went down or even the steering gave away on the car because it just veered straight into the guardrail. Then he bounced back on the other side of the track and here he comes back down to the inside once again. A couple of very hard hits for the Australian touring car champion Dick Johnson. And so the ambulance is at the scene of that car and they'll be checking him over to determine what injuries he has. In the meantime, we are under a full course caution. Once again, this certainly has been the most serious incident of the day. It looks to me like he's sitting up on the uh, on the stretcher there, and I would say that he's probably injured his feet yeah. if he has any kind of problem. There isn't a real uh, effort to uh, get him medical attention, so I think he may be uh, in pretty good shape. Well, let's go down to Jack Root and straighten out this Dale Earnhardt situation. And uh, Jack, we'll let you recap what has happened and what the situation is at the moment. Bob, the way things happen, thank heavens for a caution, because now we can explain it with the luxury of the caution flag out. Remember, Dale Earnhardt came onto pit road and he was penalized 15 seconds. The reason he brought his car into pit road is he had a minor ignition problem and they needed to change the ignition wires inside the car. They elected to change tires as well, fill it up with fuel. Well, NASCAR, as you saw on the replay, because he came across the cones, they elected to impose a 15-second penalty. Well, the car was stalled. They had to push start it to get it going again. They felt that they were going to take more than 15 seconds to do that. Everything got fired underway again. During this caution period, he came in to take one additional stop, but according to Richard Childress, everything is fine. They've been assessed the penalty. They've taken it. They're back and ready to go racing back to the front. So, Jack, he, something happened to ignition as he came off a of turn seven. And exactly, Ned. And he had enough wherewithal to know that it would be better to take that 15-second penalty than to try and limp all the way around. So that's exactly what he did. So he just cut her across the pylons and down on pit <laughs> road. Good, smart thinking. Yeah, it really Because if he'd gone another 20 feet, he couldn't have gotten to pits. So that's the situation then with the Dale Earnhardt situation. Now, there is Dick Johnson. You can see him sitting up, and he appears to be in pretty good shape and will be taken into uh, the uh, infield There's medical center for a checkup. There was a splint on his left leg. They did have a splint on his left leg. Uh, so obviously there has been, at least he's injured his leg somehow. So the field remains under caution here at Watkins Glen. That's Morgan Shepard right behind the pace car, followed by Rusty Wallace, Terry Labonte, Bobby Hillen, and Michael Walter. We're in the Finger Lakes region of New York at Watkins Glen, and we'll be back right after this. 